Good morning. Good morning. Come on in. Good morning, Buffy. Vermel, Kristen, good morning to you. Fatia, I hope that I'm getting that correctly. I think I've been calling you Felicia for a while, so please forgive me if I uh, mispronounce your name. Lakita, good morning. Thank you. Thank you, Lakita. You're so sweet. Arinda Katura, good morning to you. Pray that all is well. Go ahead and take this opportunity to love and share. This is the day that the Lord hath made. We should rejoice and be glad in it. Listen, it is a good day to be alive in the kingdom of God. If you have not already, go ahead and lift up those hands and give God thanks and praise for his mercy and his grace and his protection for your life and over your life and over your family's life. I'm telling you, it is just a wonderful thing to be on the Lord's side. I'm telling you, I want you to go ahead and grab those Bibles. Uh, go ahead and share and love. Let me know uh, where you're tuning in from. I want to show you some love along with the uh, Faith Fam. We want to show you some love. Good morning, LaShawn, Kayana. Uh, Kayana, thank you so much for um, giving already. Pray that the Lord will multiply that blessing back to you. Again, I pray that you've had a blessed weekend thus far. It's a little uh, uh, cloudy outside, but uh, the sun is definitely shining on the inside. Constance and Brittany, good to see you, sweetheart. Listen, go ahead and grab those Bibles. We are going to the book of Hebrews today. I've got a message that I believe will bless your heart, bless your spirit, and move us forward into the things of God, into the things of God. By way of announcement, certainly I hope that you've already purchased um, Royalty or Runt, the book. I pray that you've already purchased that as it has been a blessing to many lives thus far far thus far we are going to the book of hebrews in the uh, new testament towards the back of the book uh hebrews chapter 12 hebrews chapter 12 we're going to look at verse 11 first and then we're going to go into verse um, 15 hebrews 12 and 11, when you have your word, I want you to put in the comment thread, I have my word. Sister Gigi, we are praying for you in the loss of your family member. I just saw that on yesterday, um, but I will continue to lift you up in prayer. I believe that was you. Um, Hebrews 12, 11. Now, no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous. It doesn't seem joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterwards, it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness. Listen to what the author is saying. I'm going to repeat that. Now, no chasteneth seems, uh, for the present seems to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterwards, it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees and make straight paths for your feet, lest that which is lame be turned out of the way. Listen, but uh, let it rather be healed. Verse 14 is our text of emphasis today. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord, looking diligently lest any man fail 
of the grace of God. We'll stop right there. I want to look at verse 14 again. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. I want to just share this morning, talk with you, encourage you this morning from the subject. Listen, holiness is right. Holiness is right. I want you to stay with me because we have to break this thing down and we know that the word of God is already blessed. For the last um, few days, uh, particularly since last week, the Lord has been continuously dealing with me with this idea of integrity, uh, integrity in the body of Christ. On last week, we examined uh, the life of Job uh, in, in degrees. We examined um, the idea that he has lost everything that he has. He's lost his children. He's lost his status. He's lost his cattle. He's lost everything that he has held dear. But even in the midst of all of that, the text says that Job maintained his integrity in the Lord. He had every right, um, as noted by his wife and by his friends, he had every right to go to the left, to curse God and die. He had every right to do that uh, based upon the idea that he had done nothing wrong to warrant or to deserve the treatment that had been uh, somewhat edged on by God. Because Satan had to get permission from God in order to touch Job. But the Bible says that he maintained his integrity in God. Good morning, uh, Sister Alice. In other words, he maintained his character the right way of being in the Lord. And so this week I've been pondering that as we have gone through the week and as um, I continually, uh, continually and continuously pray for the body of Christ, okay? Because I always tell you that the body of Christ, we are in a war, okay? It is a war between good and evil, and the church, it seems, is right there in the middle, somewhat trying to navigate her way um, in being holy and being relevant. Between being holy, the church that God is coming back for, between being holy and relevant. Somewhat in between. Being a servant and a celebrity. That's where we are. And I'm somewhat concerned, body of Christ, those of us who call ourselves believers, those of us who are uh, the blood-bought church of the redeemed, those of us who have um, signed on to be in the army of the Lord, we don't talk like this anymore. We signed on to be a soldier in the army of the Lord. God bless you, Bishop Sellers. Good to see you this morning. We have to decide which side of the fence we're going to be on. He said, if you're lukewarm, I can take you being cold. I can take you being hot. He says, but lukewarm, I'll spew you out of my mouth. And so when we examine this idea of integrity in the body of Christ, we have to examine ourselves. We have to see, some of us have to even ask the question, are we saved or are we living in a backslidden state? Oh, I know this is not going to be easy today. I, I probably won't get much support today. But, but, but God has been, has been holding me to a level of accountability. Because I have, I have those of you who are connected and you're not really connected to other churches and so forth. And so I have a responsibility as a bearer of the cross and as a bearer of the word of God to call us into a place of sobriety. 
to call us into a place where the word of God is paramount in our lives, not your, your uh, status, not your title, not your ordination papers, not your connection, not the platform, not the amount of people that know you, that you know, that you can. No, God is calling us to a place where holiness is where we uh, abide and where we live. And so uh, God took me to Hebrews uh, this week and told me to examine uh, it's so much about uh, Hebrews that we can talk about, but he took me to this particular verse and I'm going to talk about it there. But, but, but Hebrews, uh, for those of you who are uh, Bible scholars or budding Bible scholars, you know that it is a power packed book. Okay. <clears throat> we don't necessarily know who the author is. Most scholars, generally all scholars would suggest that it's not written by Paul. Um, it's written by someone who is very well versed in Greek language. Um, <clears throat> we would suggest that it's not written by Paul for several reasons. First, first um, reason would be Paul's letters in the New Testament are categorized based upon the length of the book. Uh, and so <clears throat> when you get to Philemon, who is uh, an undisputed book of Paul, then you come up with Hebrews, which is longer. Okay, I'm just giving you just a little something for you to feast on. But it's, it's in Hebrews that wasn't first added to the canon. It was later added to the canon. Okay, the book of the Bible. Uh, but I don't know how we can leave this out. Probably because it wasn't authoritative in terms of who the author was. <clears throat> but it's in the book of Hebrews where the... Our faith is defined. The word faith is defined. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, for by it the elders obtained a good report. It is in uh, Hebrews where we find that Jesus is compared rather, um, or the superiority of Christ is compared to uh, Melchizedek, who is the king of Salem, Salem, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, Salem. Um, he's compared to him because Michel, a dick, um, just kind of pops up out of nowhere. So does Jesus kind of pop out out of nowhere. We know that he has an earthly mother and an earthly father, but he still kind of pops up out of nowhere. It's in Hebrews where we have the roll call of faith, um, uh, by faith, Abraham, da, 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 by faith, Enoch, by faith, Sarah, by faith, Noah, all of these people, you have time to go back. I don't have time, uh, but you got to go back and look at it. all of these people did mighty works, but they did not do it by their degree. They did not do it by their emotions. They, they did these things because they relied on faith. And if you're going to do anything significant in the world, in the kingdom, in your life, you're going to have to operate in a level of faith just like Noah did. I'm going to get to my text. You're going to have to operate in a level of faith that looks ridiculous, that you can't explain it to everyone else. It's going to look um, ridiculous to everyone else. Okay? And I, I've come today to challenge you both in the natural as well as the spirit realm, to begin to move in faith. Increase your faith. Ask God to increase your faith. And so um, we get to um, chapter 12. We get to chapter 12. And this is the part of the book that we would call a speech of encouragement. Really, the whole book is a speech of encouragement um, from some author. But we get to this particular section. Good to see you, Pastor Matt. We get to this particular section and the author is encouraging the reader, the Hebrews, the Jews. It's not written to a particular church. It can be absorbed by everyone. It be, can be used by everyone. He exhorts the people of God in terms of saying, listen, God chastens those who he loves. God, um, God puts us in a place where we can change because the reality of it is some, we've done some things. And yes, the grace of God covers us. But then there's a point in time where God has to bring you back to a place 
of chastening because it's his purpose in you that's on the line. This is not about you. This is about the seed of destiny that God has placed. In. He says, Jeremiah, even before I formed you in the belly, I already knew you and I ordained you. God is not going to allow what, uh, uh, allow what he has put in you and ordained for you to be destroyed by one night of pleasure. My God, my God. He says, don't, don't despise the chastening because it may seem grievous, grievous, for the moment, but the, the, the fruit of it is going to be righteousness. Verse 14, it's almost as if this verse is somewhat odd in this, this uh, sequence of verses. Let me slow down. I get excited. The author says, follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. We, 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 we don't like verses like this. We don't like messages like this. We don't like it because it brings us to accountability. We want to live our best life. And I'm telling you, I want to too. But there comes a point. There comes a time where we got you got to eat the whole book. You can't eat the parts that tastes like honey. You got to eat the parts that are bitter. He says, follow, or she, follow peace with all men, holiness and holiness without which no man should see. Peace. Follow peace. I'm concerned with the body of Christ today because the church of God has become more excited with confusion than we are with peace. God been dealing with me this week. And, and for those of you, sometimes I'll put it on my, my wall when God is dealing with me. We are living in a time where people are excited about the calamity of others. We are living in a time where churches are at war with churches. Preachers are at war with preachers. Parishioners are at war with the pulpit. It is confusion. I'm concerned, body of Christ. Because to follow means to pursue, to chase. The writer did not say Chase platform. My God. The writer did not say chase the bag as much as I love the bag. The writer does not tell us that. The writer says to us to follow peace. And we are living in a time where I'm talking to the saints because this is what the writer is talking to the saints. We have got to examine our hearts. Anytime you are comfortable with gossip, anytime you are comfortable with slander, anytime you are comfortable with your brother and your sister, rather you being at odds with your brother and your sister, your heart is being hardened and you don't even know it. My God, my God. Oh, we can dance. No better. Oh, I'm telling you, we can dance. We can shout. We can run around. Oh my God, we got the prettiest tongues you will ever hear. But we can't get along with nobody. You got a problem with everybody. You subscribe to the messiness of the world. What are you subscribing?
subscribed to? What is it that excites you? Do, do you get excited when you see a couple divorce? Do you get excited when you see a couple separate? Do, do you see, do you get excited when there's clear conflict in the church? Does that excite you? Because if that excites you, you are moving in a wicked direction. And God is calling us to a place of sobriety. He says, follow peace. What is peace? It's a tranquil state of the soul. Hey, I, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm going to offend you, but I'm okay with that. There's nothing that I seek that God can't give me, so I'm okay. I have the liberty to say what I need to say, what God wants me to say. Peace is a tranquil state of the soul. And what I have found out, beloved, as I have um, been in this world, but not of it, there are a lot of people who are not living in peace. We say we have the Holy Spirit. We say we're called. We've got a title. We've got new ordination papers, but you're messy. Always got something going on. You can't have the Holy Spirit and be messy. You can't have the Holy Spirit and, a, and be a gossiper. You can't have the Holy Spirit and rejoice in the calamity of other people. Confusion, bitterness, racism, sexism. Angry, you're just angry. God wants you to live in peace, not rest in peace. You know, some people don't get peace until they die. That's why we say rest in peace. No, I don't want to rest in peace when I die. I want my soul to be at rest while I'm alive. And sometimes you got to make some necessary changes. I'm going to get to my text. I'm in the text. Sometimes you got to get make some necessary changes in order to maintain your peace. Glory to God. Sometimes I'm not a cut off type of person in terms of, you know, preach a doctrine of cut folks off. I don't believe that that's God's way. I believe that, you know, you should try to work things out as much as you can. But at some point, listen, at some point, it, 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 if it is costing you your peace, you might have to let it go. You might have to let some people go. You might have to let some of the responsibilities that you had all your life. You might have to let it go because God wants you to be in a place of peace. He wants you to chase peace, not the bad. That's a human response to not having peace a lot of time. God wants you to be able to get along with your brothers and your sisters. And sometimes getting along with people means I can only text you. I can't call you because you disturb my peace. I love you, but I have to love you from a distance because you're disturbing what it is that makes my soul keep itself together. The writer didn't say follow tithing, although I believe in tithing. I believe in giving. But the, the writer says follow peace. What is the greatest of these two commandments or the greatest of the commandments that they asked Jesus? Jesus did not say fall out. In the spirit, Jesus did not say, you know, as many auxiliaries that you are on. He says the first thing that you're going to need to do is you're going to need to love the Lord thy God with all your heart, mind, body, soul, and spirit. And then he said, next, you need to love your neighbor as yourself. These two, these two commandments hang all the laws and the prophets. I was in a parking lot this week. I had never really experienced a level of racism, but I, I was in the parking lot uh, at a place and had backed in and this uh, Caucasian gentleman drove right in front of me and parked his car, put his car in park and stared at me with a level of disgust. 
I guess I should not have been driving what I had been driving. I guess I should not have looked as nice as I looked, but he stopped his car and parked it in front of me as with a look of disgust and stared at me. Well, I did something I probably shouldn't have done. I waved at him. Uh, but nowadays you can't, you can't even, you, you got to be sober and vigilant and wise. Let people do what they do. But, but, but what I'm telling you today is that we're living in a time now where the enemy, listen, where the enemy has loosed demons of hate. And my God, if we can't find peace in the church, He says, follow peace with all men, not just your friends, not just your family members, not just the people that support you. You like them. No, he says, follow peace with. I know we not may, may not shout on this, but this is going to help you. He says, follow peace with all men. Listen, and holiness, which means the same weight, the following of peace holds the same weight as holiness. I'm going to be done in just a second. Following peace with all men, with all women, with all colors, with all uh, status. You, you, you can't just like people who like you. Pastors, pastors' wives, I have never seen such nasty people in my life. And this is not my soap box, but I'm telling you this because this is relevant for the word of God today. People in the church, I ain't going to call you church people, can be some of the nastiest, rudest, entitled people on the face of God's green earth. But God is calling you today to repentance. Nasty rude. You don't know who knows who. You don't know who knows who and how you can offend and hurt someone who is literally standing on the edge of giving up and you come in with your title and look over people and don't speak to people. And I'm telling you, some of these pastors' wives, I, I'm telling you, I, I, I ain't seen nothing like it. Why are you so angry? Why are you so rude? And I'm not picking on one set. I'm, I'm, I'm putting this thing in perspective. Why are you so nasty to the people that God has placed in your life for you to shepherd? And you're the nastiest one. God told me to take, tell you today, you, you got to get your, you got to get back to the basics. God bless you, uh, Sister Johnson Wilkerson. Thank you for sowing. I must be saying something right here today. You got to get back to the place where your title and your church and your, your money means nothing. But the, the go back to the basics. You can't be anointed and be nasty. You might have a form of godliness. You got a form. You got all the right moves. But your heart is wicked, said the Lord. It ain't no reason to be nasty in the church, y'all. We can't win souls to the kingdom if we got our mouth in everything. You liking and loving discord in the church, whether it's right or wrong, you are, you are supporting discord and confusion in the church. These things ought not be so, James said. Check your heart. Because if you get, get excited about brothers and sisters in the church fighting, you get, and some, some folks, what I found out, and I'm going to go, so, some folks I found out, they'll start the stuff, and then they'll, they're gone. You don't see them anymore. And so now you got people that's at odds with each other, and it was once people that, that had admired you. And see what I found about, out about admirations, people that will admire you, listen, they will admire you and then it'll turn into competition. Y'all don't know. Y'all don't like what I'm saying today. I'm telling you what I know. People will admire you. It will turn into competition. And when they cannot reach where you are, it will turn into all out disdainment. 
But God says to you today, check your heart. I have to check my heart. Sometimes I can't say what I want to say. It ain't my place. Sometimes if I feel a certain way about somebody, I might just have to pray for them. It's not for me to get on the phone and call somebody. and act. No, God is calling us back to a place of sobriety and the basics of the word of God. But because we don't read it, we don't know. We'll just click on somebody's live and take their word for it. I'm telling you today, you better get in this word for yourself. I'm closing. You better get back into this word for yourself. He says, follow peace. With all men. My sister, Monique, good to see you, sweetheart. He says, follow peace with all men. I'm telling you, these titles have messed some of y'all up. I'm telling you. Holiness is a level of consecration. That's literally what it means in the Greek. Consecration, purification, an effort, uh, or I'm sorry, the effect of consecration is holiness. Woo! Glory to God. This might be a two-parter because I spent a lot of time talking about following peace, but this consecration piece and this holiness piece is a whole nother message by itself. Sanctification of heart and life. God bless you, Arenda, for giving sanctification oh we don't talk about sanctification we don't like that because as long as you got that degree you good holiness is still right right by itself that's the title of this message if i didn't give it to you holiness is right consecrating yourself Setting yourself apart. God bless you, Eddie, for sowing. Setting yourself aside from the world. I've said it before. We are in the world, but we are not of the world. Bring yourself back to a place where that is you. You Holiness is not going to always yield to you celebrity. Because holiness does not come naturally to us. Holiness is so hard because holiness is not natural to the human body. God bless you, Tarsha. Good to see you. Holiness is not something that comes naturally. David says, I was born in sin. I was shaped in iniquity. After he was conceived in, in sin. His, after well, his child. Um, he says, um, I, I was born into this sinful world. So when I choose Christ, I got to choose a level of self-denial. And I love grace. I'm telling you, I'm a proponent of grace. But I think there needs to be a balance as well. You ought to want to live holy because that's the integral thing to do. That's the right thing to do. It honors God when you honor him with your body. It honors God when you turn aside the things that you big and bad enough to do. It ain't nobody going to check you for it. But does that honor God? I know you I know you don't care what people think. I know that. I, I, I to a degree I don't either. But does that honor God? And my God, we get to the place now. I don't care who sees it. I don't care who see me doing it. Does that honor God and does that edify the body of Christ? These are things we have to ask ourselves when we make decisions that please us. But does it please you might can drink and be okay with it. But if, what if somebody sees you drinking and they say, oh, well, I can do that. But see, they drink because they see you drink and then they go out here and have an accident and, and kill somebody. I'm not saying I, I don't I don't personally I'm not I don't have a problem with it. OK. In my humanity. 
But if it's a stumbling block for somebody else, can I resist it? You might have lungs of steel. The most beautiful colored liver and lung. But if they see you doing it and they go out and do it, you th does it edify the body of Christ? He says holiness, the same weight of following peace and the text and holiness without which you can't do it and see the Lord at the same time. David says in Psalm 51, create in me a clean heart. That's, that's what I'm going to close on today. I'm going to close here and we may revisit this later in the week. He says, I know my tendencies. I know what I have the propensity to be and do. David, as anointed as he was, was as troubled he was. The same trouble because the anointing comes with a certain level of thorns. Very good, Eddie. Exactly. Kingdom Seeker. Exactly. The anointing comes with a certain level of thorns in your flesh. And I'm telling you, the best thing that you will ever do as a, a Christian is to identify what your thorn is. Because when you identify what your thorn is, then you can manage it. Some people don't know how to be honest with themselves. And so they don't know what they like. They don't know how to handle their body. They don't know how to handle their mind. They don't know when they're talking too much because they don't, they don't self-reflect. Sometimes I can be opinionated and I find myself saying, shut your mouth. That has nothing to do with you. Nothing to do with you. Don't you ever put your mouth on somebody's marriage. That has nothing to do with you. Don't you ever put your mouth on, on some, some pastor. That has nothing to do with you. Unless it has something to do with you. Now what I do believe in. If someone's life is in danger. Or someone's child is in danger. I'm going to say something. Because the people that I love, I love. And, and I can deal with you not liking me if it's going to get some people out of trouble. But I believe you understand the balance of what I'm saying. <clears throat> David says to, to God, create in me a clean heart. We start off with a clean heart. But because of the vicissitudes of life, because of discouragement, because of rejection. And I'm closing. Um, because of the things that we have experienced in this body, particularly for those of us who have... Um, served in the church and had to, to you've been bivocational. You, you get it probably on a lot of levels because you're so passionate about the things of God. And sometimes when you go through those things, it changes you. I'm closing the book. It changes you. But God says to you today, I want to, I, I want to, I want to create in you a heart of flesh and change that heart of stone. Rejection can change you. Rejection can make you cynical. Rejection, come on, re rejection can cause you to <clears throat> question people, to not let people in. And just like Job, it's, it's normal. It's like, it, that's, you know. But God says we're supernatural beings. I want to I fill you with peace. You're not sleeping at night because you, 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 God says peace belongs to you. He says, I'm Jehovah Shalom, the God of peace. I'm the Prince of peace. Isaiah said, it. he says, he's going to be the Prince of peace, the everlasting father. The Prince of peace is with you right now, waiting to remove the hurt, right? Waiting to remove the pain. If that's you, come on, lift up your hands. And I'm I, I, I want you to just ask God, God, fill me with peace so I can love my neighbor right. God, fill me with peace so I can love my, my spouse right, my wife, my husband. Give me peace. I don't want to keep remembering the things and the transgressions. God, give me peace in my own self. Help me to resolve the dichotomy of being human and divine at the same time. God, give me peace. So that I can extend that peace and that grace and that love to other people. Father, in the name of Jesus, 
I thank you today for this. Thank you for this word, this sobering word, this foundational word, this didactic word that brings us to a place when we've gone so far out there that you can bring us to a foundational message of faith nestled in where the patriarchs function by faith. I pray for the one today that <clears throat> is dealing with confusion, dealing with pain, dealing with conflict in their lives, in their marriage, in, in, with their children. And I pray, God, that you would work these situations out. You know every need. I pray for Larry Tate today. Go ahead and put put in the put in the the comment thread. I want to call these names. Out. I pray for the one who is in conflict. Give us peace. We don't need another house. God, we'll we'll forego all of that. We don't need another car. We don't need another invitation to preach. God, just give us peace in our mind. Give us peace in our heart. Give us peace on our job. Give us peace in our marriages. Give us peace. And God, while we're following peace, God, help us to be holy and righteous. Help us, God, to do the right things when nobody is looking. God, I pray for Eddie today. Help us to do the right things when pastor isn't looking and when first lady is not around and when the district elder is on vacation. God, give us. The strength to stand in holiness when we have every right to do the things that we want to do. This is our prayer. and We pray it in the name of Jesus. And Father, if there's one today that does not know you in the pardoning of their sins, I pray, God, that you would cause them and bring them to a level of repentance. If you don't know Jesus, just say, God, I repent of my sin. Come into my heart. Come into my life. Change my mind. Change my heart. I, I, I believe that there's someone on the line today who is struggling with the spirit of suicide because you don't have peace. I speak to the one today who doesn't have peace, who doesn't have peace. I snatch you out of suicide. I snatch you out of depression. Jesus has come that you might have life and that you may have it abundantly. We pray this prayer in Jesus' name. I'm telling you, God has pulled someone from the mountain of suicide. They were getting ready to jump off. But today, God has replaced mourning with dancing. I, there's somebody just to give God some praise right there. Oh, this is a celebration. Somebody has been delivered from depression today. Somebody has been delivered from bitterness today. Somebody has been delivered from being a cynic today because that's what the peace of God and the peace of God with path, which surpasses all in your understanding is going to guard your heart and your mind through Christ Jesus. You can't do it without Christ. Listen, I love you. I want to hear from you. I want to hear from you. That address is still the same. That P.O. Box is still the same. P.O. Box 2113, Sharpsburg, North Carolina. It's in the pinned comments. Send me your prayer request. Send me your testimonies. I want to I wanna read it. I want to share it with uh, your brothers and your sisters. I'm telling you, God is doing something amazing in your life. And I'm just glad that I've got a first row seat to see what God is doing for you. We're still on our mission for 300 souls. Uh, we're still on a mission. If you want to become a Faith Forward partner officially, uh, that form is available to you uh, as well. We want to make sure that we're making the name of God great. We're not an ordinary ministry. Oh, it's a Christ-centered, God-centered ministry. This ain't about me. This ain't about you. This is about christ being exalted in the earth. Tarsha, we're believing God. We're believing God. I want y'all to put out Tarsha's name in the comments. We, we want the devil to see we're not playing. 
We believe God. If anybody knows, where, where's, what's your location, Tarsha? Because there may be a faith floor partner that can help you. What's your location, Tarsha? What city are you in? We want to bombard heaven for you that God gives you another place soon. He's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think. God bless you, Mama Barbara, for sowing. Listen, go ahead and sow that seed this morning. If this word, and I know it has because it has blessed me. Go ahead and sow that seed. You know how to sow. Um, um, <clears throat> Cash app, PayPal, all of those avenues are available to you. Jacksonville, Florida. Amen. We'll be lifting you up, Tarsha. We're believing God for you that he'll move on your behalf in not too many days hence. Stay connected for there is a blessing in connection. Go ahead and get that seed. Go ahead and sow that seed. Once you've sown that seed, I want you to text me and let me know you've sown. 910-710-1866. Let me know that you've sown. 910-710-1866. Listen until our next text. Uh, next time together. I pray that you have a peaceful day in the Lord. This is my prayer. See you soon.